Hey, Soul Tribe. This brief video is about the uh, safety protocols for ISTA San Diego. So it goes out to anyone who's considering becoming a participant or the loved ones, you know, family members of, of those who are coming. I wanted to let you know what um, precautions and considerations that we're taking in order to reopen ISTA. You know, as you know, we've all been in this global kind of staycation. It's a pause and a time to look in, to reflect. And I think it's been beautiful, you know, all the um, introspection. And it's important for us to be doing work locally. Um, you know, we're a tribe and a community that's based on collective gatherings and holding rituals and, and doing temple um, and a lot of travel. But you know, deep in the spiritual wisdom traditions, the ultimate travel is always back home. And in a sense, I feel like that's what we're doing now is we're all coming home and San Diego is my home. And I'm looking to host a small local gathering of others who feel really called to um, pray for the world and do rituals right now. And so in order to create, you know, safe, like sane, consensual uh, container for this work, what I'm asking um, is that everyone who's coming, we're limiting the size to 25 participants. And I'd like to invite all those people to have uh, tested negative for COVID in order to come. And so there's a number of logistics to consider right now um, because obviously uh, testing doesn't mean you're, you know, it can give people a false sense of uh, security. So I want to give you some um, tips on how to do that uh, with the best results, meaning um, being mindful of your behavior before the testing and after the testing. And because this is a lot of information, I actually have a, a living document that will be updated as we're following the pandemic and there's more information. So I'm gonna um, post a link to that doc. And so I just want you to hear, instead of just reading it all, it's kind of dry. I wanted you to hear it from my heart that it's something that we're really, you know, that I really am concerned and, and careful about. Um, and I do want uh, for you to consider you know, this is how we take care of the community. Like these are the protocols that we're doing in order to have the privilege and the honor of creating a temple in September. Now, because it's happening September 15th, you'll want to get tested in, at the end of August. Um, if you go to the county health clinic, you for $40, you can get a full panel of all your STI tests and a COVID test. And that will sometimes take 10 days. It might take up to two weeks. So you really want to do that at the end of August. Now, what you want to do before you get tested, um, there's like a three-day incubation window, but you want to be practicing um, your, with masks, not going into groups, you know, sanitizers, and, um, and really being conscientious that the, that the way that you interact with people may affect, you know, people down the line. So you do that before you're testing at least three days for sure, testing, um, and then continuing to do that after you get your results. And so the trick, like the, <laughs> the exception is those people who are coming in, there are a few who want to fly in still from other parts of California or, or the States. And the desire is um, that you be impeccable about the airport spaces. So you want to be sure to land with the three days in San Diego before doing the testing, right? Because we want to be clear that you didn't pick something up at the airport. So you give yourself that three-day window and then you're going to have to find quicker results. Um, it's more expensive to do the rapid testing, but there is an FDA approved 15 minute finger prick that gives you same day you know, results. And you can find those around San Diego. Again, I'll leave resources here, but um, you'll want to be extra cautious going through the airport, wearing your masks and, and, um, and, and really being conscious of not touching your face and washing hands. And, and so then, 
those protocols continue right up to the day that we gather. When we gather, we'll take everyone's temperature. We're going to have plenty of land-based rituals out in the open air where we can do emotional release and we won't be sharing pillows um, the way that we do sometimes. That way we'll keep our own juices and emotional um, energy into our own emo into our own pillows. Um, you know, beds will be six feet apart for sleeping and you'll be able to negotiate who you want to be intimate with to what degree based on what their protocols are before and after testing. So you'll have those conversations will really honor a space where you can negotiate that. And, um, you know, we've done ISTAs in the past where there have been individuals for religious reasons or health reasons haven't you know, engaged in touch at all and still gotten beautiful, powerful uh, in initiations and transmissions. And so it will be up to you the degree to which you, you know, come into intimate connection with the tribe. But my hope is that with these precautions and with the testing that we'll be able to run the ISTA as we would any other ISTA as a way to, to put our bodies together and activate these energies and do deep the prayer for uh, healing of the world as well as and starting with of course you know the inner beloved so if you have any questions or concerns about um, these protocols or the content and the journey itself um, i look forward to connecting with you and philippe is my rock star organizer and he's he's wonderful with all the logistics he can help you uh, get registered and answer your questions about the venue, which is a, just a really beautiful land that has a Dakini cave and it has, it just has this gorgeous energy and, and, and this close history with my own tantric lineage. Um, there's an ashram there that we'll be practicing at. So I look forward to sharing that with you. Lots, lots more. Sending love.